oh, do I feel good today. And just like my man Michael Knox in the chat says, this is my favorite part of the day. Well, guess what, Michael? It is ours, too. Welcome, everybody. It feels like we've been here for eight years, and this is day number eight, the start of week number two of our rebranding, our relaunch. And you guys have made this week unbelievable. I am the coach. I drive this bus. We're here every single weekday at 10 a.m. Eastern time. DTL Golf, 3 p.m. on Tuesday. We'll have more of that coming up. History made on the PGA Tour. But as always, we are the most transparent show in all of sports betting as well. We are more than just picks. But yesterday, I was the weak link. Travis Kelsey, catch one more ball, please. Amon Ross St. Brown had a solid day, not a great day. I was a little uh, worried about that. But how about my man, A.B.? How about Howie Schwab taking care of business? Nice little plus 220 on the A.B. 3. The A.B. 3 will be a staple of our show today. Now, without, bring, without further ado, let's bring in my partner, the man who created DTL. And if you're on social media, use that hashtag. There he is right there. Five tool player, my man, A.B., Alan Bell. And A.B., boy, do we have a lot to talk about. And there's a lot of new people. They're going to be dropping in every single day. We want to be very, very clear. We'll have all of our picks on the bottom, but this is more than a pick show. Big time, correct? Correct, sir. Indeed. Look, there are picks right there on the bottom, but it is more than just a pick show. However, we're never going to hide them from you. Let's You're go. damn right. Now, before we get into our discussion, there's so much to talk about with the NFL, the PGA Tour. We'll have hockey picks today, also hoops. But what are the choices for the cruise play of the day? So we've got some nice choices here. It's a little bit of a slower day, so to say, in regards to what we have on the board. It, but throw that full screen if you don't mind. Let's take a look here. All right, so we've got North Carolina. Minus eight and a half. We've got two ranked games in college basketball today. There's another one that our man Howie is going to hit on later on. But we've got North Carolina minus eight and a half. The 76ers team total over 126 and a half. The Atlanta Hawks plus eight on the road. And then your boy Chris Stapps got Zingus, poor Zingus, over 18 and a half points at minus 115. The poll is in the chat. All right, vote now. Chat's crushing it, two and one. Nice mm -hmm. 67%. So there you go. And we'll uh, update that at the end of the show for what the choice for tonight's going to be. That's becoming my favorite part of the day is the cruise play of the day. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, if you guys don't think we listened to you last night during the show, our man, Zach, he tweeted out some stuff that he worked up merchandise wise. He said, it's us against the books, the crew. Well, guess what? I talked to Eduardo and AB. Guess what's going to be our very first featured merch item of the week when we launch February 1st. What do you think that's going to be? Eduardo is a real person. He's a real person. Yes. 100%. No, I'll bring that's, him on the what show. Saying, that's what the shirt was going to be. No, oh. no. What, what is it? Which one is it? Which I didn't get it? that for a second. All right. So, Zach, we listened to you, and we're going to have a little DTL on the back of the shirt as well. Uh, all right. Let's oh, the, jump one, right the in. one that Zach made. The one that's that Zach made. Talking yes. About? Yes. Yeah, dude. He's really good, man. And uh, yeah, that's a really good, cool design. Yeah, it's going to be our very first shirt. It's going to be awesome. Uh, by the way, in the chat, somebody's from Kansas City. I just lost it because there's so many of you already. But uh, morning, everybody. I stay in KC so I can catch it live. Now, that's from Elliot. AB, that's where we start. Speaking of the ice man, so to speak, last night, Patrick Mahomes did what he'd never done before. True road game. And he said after the game, I relished it. He said, I wanted it. And... Boy, what an absolute battle. The Chiefs going on the road. They were two-and-a-half-point underdogs. The fourth quarter was an absolute battle. There were so many swings in the game. I was losing my mind watching with my kids. What is your – just your first take from the Chiefs moving on to play the Ravens next week? Kansas City Chiefs are like Ric Flair in the 80s. All right, you want that belt? You want to be the man? You've got to beat the man, and you're going to have to take that title belt off of them. And they go into Buffalo. First off, that game, that was a damn football game right there. Yes, I, I love, yeah, it's phenomenal. I love this Mahomes Allen rivalry. Now, you know, Chiefs fans might say, What rivalry? What are you talking <laughs> about? But it is awesome. That was a great game. Uh, the numbers, the viewership was just massive. Uh, it, it was just a blast to watch. And here is the thing moving forward Ravens. Pressure's all on you, man. Mm -hmm. Pressure's all on you. It is so dangerous playing the Chiefs when they have really house money, nothing to lose. 
Ooh, that's tough. I, but what, what did we talk about yesterday on Driving the Line, special Sunday edition? And we said that the big-time players have to step up in big-time games. We've heard that so many times. Well, Travis Kelsey did that. Now, we didn't cash his catches. He had five. We did cash his yards for 75. But two big scores, as Howie predicted yesterday on the show. But the issue I had with him was the heart up to the box. Now, hopefully that was to his brother, who was up there without a shirt on and was going absolutely bonkers. But I think it was to Taylor. And so Kelsey, who's my favorite, second favorite player, he just went a little bit like that. Did you like the heart to take Taylor Swift after the touchdowns? No, I hated it. Like, no. It, but then again, let me say two things. Number one, his brother, even if it was for him, he didn't see it. He, our man was having a blast yeah, out was. there. I had to respect that one. That would be so much fun. And number two, yeah, you know what? I, I don't think that I would be a, a heart celebration guy. I can't even do it. But then again, I mean, if I were dating Taylor Swift, I'd probably do it too. So <laughs> just to rub go, it man. in. You know what? Sometimes, hey, Silk the Shocker said, sometimes you just got to charge it to the game. So there you go. Yeah. Jonathan says Bills fans had to be sick of hearing wide right. Well, if some of you young yeah. people, 30 years ago, four straight years in the Super Bowl, they could not get it done. And they're starting to feel like, to me, AB, a little bit like the Dallas Cowboys. And here's what I mean by this is that the Cowboys next year, Every single week, no matter how good they are, even if they go 14 and three, it will not matter because everybody's going to say every single show and probably ours as well. Well, it doesn't matter till they get the playoffs. Well, it doesn't matter till they get the playoffs. Yesterday, Josh Allen did everything he could. He cashed his rushing attempts. He cashed his rushing yards, but he only threw for 186 yards. He couldn't get it done. We cashed Shakur, who went over 40, but Stefan Diggs dropped a sure touchdown late in the game. So as much as we want to say the Chiefs won that game, the Bills had their opportunities and couldn't get it done. The Bills absolutely had their opportunities. And you know what? Uh, when we were texting yesterday during the game, and even on the show before it, Phil had said, look, this is the playoffs. The smallest thing can change and end your season in one drop. All right? I'm not putting it all on that. It's obviously not. But you have to operate at maximum efficiency, especially against a team like the Chiefs and with Patrick Mahomes. How many times did the Bills get down to the red zone? All right? Mm -hmm. Didn't put in touchdowns. You've got to score touchdowns. You've got to do it. And let's also be honest here. The Bills were lucky that the Chiefs had a fumble through the end zone. They were about to punch in another touchdown mm -hmm. on them, and it might not have even been close. So, look, the playoffs, are like, how many quarterbacks and teams – have winning records in the playoffs. It's really just not built to do that. So while the Bills had their chances, like I stop right there and say the Chiefs won the damn game. Like Agreed. plain and simple, Agreed. it's hard to win them. And you know what? They keep doing it, man. That's why Patrick Mahomes, whatever number you want to write on a check, the guy's worth two of them. He's, he's the best player in the league. The fake punt, the chat's talking about it. Joey Blaze talking about it. AP, fake punt was silly. It wasn't so much that the call was silly. The way they set it up was awful. I saw it from my living room that they were going to do that, with like that bunched up formation, the four players. And by the way, AP, and the last thing I'll say, and then we'll spin it forward, is that if Andy Reid does not take that play to McCole Hardman inside the 10 out of the playbook, he did it twice yesterday. The man yeah. weighs 170 pounds. What are you doing? Give it to Pacheco and shove it in. If that's not out of the playbook next week, my head will absolutely explode. <laughs> explode. Explode. Yeah. All I right, totally so get that. Yeah, right? I, no, I'm with you. I, I'm absolutely with you there. And uh, the fake punt, what was it, fourth and three? Is that Something right? Like that. Fourth and four, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You have an absolute concrete bulldozer as a quarterback. Run him. On fourth and three, do it. Uh, shout out to DeMar Hamlin. I mean, we're all proud of, you know, the accomplishment and where you're at. I'm not running DeMar Hamlin, all right? <laughs> I know. I'm running Josh Allen. That's what, I know. if you stop it, you stop it, but. I agree. I agree. So the Bills will now have to sit another year, and now Josh Allen will be just like Dak Prescott. Just like Dak Prescott. Because now he knows his kryptonite is number 15, and he wears a red uniform named Patrick Mahomes. But now we're going to have MVP against MVP. And next week, the early line, according to BetMGM, it's already moving around, A.B. It was at three and a half. I just looked at this moment at BetMGM. It literally just moved down to three. I think we're going to be talking about this movement all week long. But you said it. 
The pressure is now on the Baltimore Ravens. They haven't hosted an AFC championship game in, what, 50-some-odd years? These fans have never seen this. When they won in 2000, it was about wild card and getting to the Super Bowl. And now you've got the two-time Super Bowl champion, Patrick Mahomes, coming after winning in Buffalo, and they're going to be underdogs again? What's your early thought on this line? Did BetMGM and the books get it right? They got it right for sure. That's why we're seeing three and a half to three. Well, it'll jump back to three and a half. Like it's not going to go two and a half, right? It's going to stay mm -hmm. right on three. It's not going to, you know, drop down. And essentially it's going to be, are you eating the hook or not? Right? So here's the thing with this game. Obviously two dynamic quarterbacks that are in it. It is going to put so much stress on the defensive coordinators because you had better be careful calling blitzes against either of these guys. The mm -hmm. Chiefs can just just crush your dreams on them. Baltimore can too. Th this is going to be a hell of a game. My initial read here, like we're not making any official picks or anything like that, but man, 44 and a half. I'm just saying that's an interesting number. It was. Yesterday, They buried, it looked like at halftime it would sail to the over, by the way. It closed at like 50 and a half. Uh, 51 was the score there. Obviously, the Lions sailed to the over. Uh, real quick, my man Scott, shout out to you. Hit a bunch of parlays off the information we had yesterday, not just the picks. That's why we're so important that you watch us live. Uh, also, uh, shout out to Jeffrey for this stat. Patrick Mahomes, 9-1-1 one one AB against the spread in the playoffs. When the games are the biggest, this man shows up. So how big of a deal do you think it is that Mahomes was able to go in in his first true road game? Because I, I went to the Super Bowl when they beat the 49ers. The atmosphere is just different. It's not like being in a home stadium, but he's done it. They did it yesterday in a very, very hostile environment. So I don't think the Ravens stadium, which really bothered C.J. Stroud and the Texans, will be that much of an issue for number 15 in his squad. Uh, it, it, not even an issue. Patrick Mahomes is Tom Brady. He relishes it. He wants it. All right? Playing home's too easy. All right? He wants your hatred. He wants all of that. And that's how this team is built, because they want to rip your heart out and show you that they are the best team in the NFL. And quite mm -hmm. frankly, who says no? Who wants Who to play no? him? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jared says, I think Ravens have their best chance compared to previous years here, but Chiefs know how to win on big stages. No doubt about that. So there's a lot of unhappy Bills betters out there, a lot of unhappy money line betters out there. But if you had the guts to bet on the Chiefs, you're very, very happy this morning. Now, the other game yesterday, it was a hell of a lot of fun. It was a hell of a lot of fun. And you got to give credit to both Baker Mayfield and Jared Goff. Because they came out and balled. Both players cashed their attempts, their completions, their yards, their touchdowns. And Baker Mayfield even helped us with a little parlay for you, throwing that interception very, very early in the game. The Lions, and I don't know if you saw this, the post game from Dan Campbell, and he's like, that's two. Now we got two more. I'm like, I will run through a wall for this man. But the Lions, they not only did it in the air. But, man, and unfortunately, they decided that it was going to be Gibbs's day instead of Montgomery's day. I'm not bitter. But they've got two guys that can run the football, and they're very, very even when it comes to passing and running. How impressed were you with the Lions yesterday? The Detroit Lions are the most balanced offense in the NFL. Uh, they, they are ridiculous, man. Like, every time you think that they're just crushing you on the ground and you're going to move your defense up and stop that, you forget that Jared Goff is elite accurate, and they just tear you apart. Guys like Amon Ross St. Brown, Jamison Williams, and then Sam Laporte to deal with as well. And shout out to him. We spoke about him on the pregame show on Sunday that this dude's from Iowa. Have you met anyone from Iowa? I don't care if his knees are ripped out. This man is going to go out and ball, and that's exactly what he did. And let me say this. The 49ers defense had issues with Jordan Love. Big time. Big time. If you think you had problems with Jordan Love, just wait. Laporta, nine for 65. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Nine for 65. 
Um, so he was Amon Ross A. Brown, solid game. His number, and and probably that's on me. The number was a little bit too high, and I, I probably shouldn't have played it, but hindsight is obviously 2020. He had eight catches, so he cashed his catches, 77 yards. And when they needed those catches late in the game, they got them. One thing I want to hit on, because this is very, very important from a betting standpoint as we move forward with the Lions, because Todd Bowles, who I think is a good defensive coordinator, but not everybody is built to be a head coach. I don't think Dan Campbell is a great game manager, but I think he's a great head coach because sometimes it's about motivation. But Todd Bowles yesterday did something that drives me absolutely bananas. And I know analytics, A.B., are what they are. But Brandon Staley, he's on line one, and he wants to talk because yesterday, down 14, on the road, they score that touchdown with Mike Evans, who had a monster day, almost 150 yards receiving. And they score the touchdown, they're down eight. Then they go for two. And the thought process is, well, you go for two, and then if you get it, you're down six, you can win the game the next touchdown, or you know what you need for the next touchdown. How about, or you kick the extra point, you're down seven, and then the second touchdown, you can decide if you want to go and win the game. But this whole going for two on the first touchdown is starting to drive me bananas. Look, I, I don't care who's drawn up the analytics. It doesn't make any sense, all right? You notice the team, or let me say this. You notice the coaches in college in the NFL that are putting rings on their fingers? You know what they don't do? Dumb stuff, all right? Jim Harbaugh didn't, he didn't do any of that when he just won a national championship. Nick Saban didn't do any of that when he won 90 national championships. Look at the NFL. Now, the Chiefs, they'll go for two when they need to, but they don't just line up and start doing banana land mm -hmm. circus things, all right? They take care and handle their business. They kick field goals in the first half. They take points, all right? That's what these – like, why? Just be down seven, all right? All the pressure's on the other team. Mm -hmm. It's all on the other team. They are the favorite. They're playing at home, and if they go into overtime, the pressure's on them, not you. It, it just it, – it didn't make any sense to me whatsoever. For some reason, and it doesn't seem to get any better, football coaches, especially when they become head coaches, they're really good at coaching, but they don't put enough time into the game management part of being a head coach. So now let's spin it forward. This week, the Lions going on the road to play in San Francisco. They will be the late game on Sunday. And by the way, we'll have a special uh, drive in the line at 2 p.m. Eastern on Sunday uh, before the Chiefs and the Ravens. Um, <clears throat> I lost the one I was going to go to. So many of you keep that chat going. Make me look like an idiot. I like it. So here, according to BetMGM, San Francisco minus six and a half, the total 51. If you think the Lions are going to win on the field, that money line comes back at you at plus 240. They were 10-point favorites, A.B., on Saturday night. They didn't take the lead until a minute to go in the football game. To me, and this is just me, I would probably buy the full point lay the 30 or 40 cents and get that seven and a half because I think it's going to be very, very important. But I would also feel comfortable playing the Lions at this number. How about you? I'm looking at the under in this game. You have two teams that, yes, they could score for sure. We're not saying that at all. But these are two teams that can really own drives and go 9, 10, 11 plays. And, yeah, they could end it with points but they just took seven minutes off the clock. And, and I think that San Francisco, after that game against Green Bay, they're going to take a look at their offense and say, all right, where are deficiencies? Where can we find Detroit kind of slipping defensively? And where can we take advantage of it? I, I'm leaning under on the 51. Again, not an official play, nothing like that. We're going to get into all that. But just from the look of it, th this feels like an old school type of game here. And I – there could be some punts that come into play as well. I agree. The one thing I like about Dan Campbell and the playoffs does not deter him in this at all is that he's not scared to go for it. And when you're betting a spread involving the Detroit Lions, then you know that any number can be important because he goes for two all the time. We saw it in Dallas. They lose that five yards. He still went for two from the seven. So that does not scare him. I like the fact that he's not scared. Kyle Shanahan, he's not scared either. but. I watched him in the Super Bowl. Kyle Shanahan has a history that when he gets into big games, he starts to really get away from what he's good at and getting away from what his team is good at. I don't know why it is, but it seems like the bigger the game, that happens. Are you afraid of that a little bit with the 49ers this week? 
a little, right? Like, like that's certainly there. But I, I think that, you know, what Detroit went through against the Rams, uh, that, you know, kind of really, really tight game, win it, exhale, get after it the next week. I, I think that San Francisco could have a lot of that there. Really, what you're going to want to pay, uh, pay attention to is uh, the defensive pressure that both of these teams could get, both, you know, Hutchinson for Detroit against Brock Purdy and obviously what the 49ers do phenomenally with their defensive front getting after Jared Goff because Jared Goff is not the most mobile guy, even though we saw him run way more than he normally does. But offensive line is going to be big, 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 big in this game. And a fun fact, do you yeah. remember the Super Bowl? All right, Kyle Shanahan uh, with the Falcons. He was the OC against, what, the Patriots, right? The 28-3, right. right? You remember the first night of that week of the Super Bowl. You remember he lost the playbook? Do you remember that storyline? I forgot. I forgot. I was right beside him. You're kidding. Nope. I was right beside him when it happened, and my man was just looking, and I knew something was wrong, and I didn't say anything, and I didn't know what happened until afterward, and I was like, I was right beside him the whole time. And you know what? He was cool, calm, collected, got it, moved on. That's how our man operates. So, well, well apparently, uh, the Falcons lost the playbook in the second half of that game as well. Yeah, uh, way yeah, back. Yeah, defense. They didn't help out much. Uh, tomorrow, right here on DTL. I love that hashtag. That hashtag DTL. I'm absolutely loving it. Uh, we will discuss all of the coaching things that are going on around the league. There's a lot of rumors going around. We'll break it down tomorrow and who might be going where in the NFL. That is on Tuesday's edition of Driving the Line. AB. Yesterday, with all of the attention on football, there was something that happened in the world of golf that was absolutely historic. So I want to ask you a question before we bring on our next guest. Because back in 1996, yesterday, it's the first time, first time since 1996, that a reigning U.S. amateur champion went on to win a PGA Tour event as the reigning champion. His name was Tiger Woods. Do you know the man that Tiger Woods beat in that U.S. Amateur in 1996 to do what Nick Dunlap did yesterday out there about two hours from where I'm sitting right now? Do you know that man's name? Uh, I, well, what I understand is that he has an excellent head of lettuce there, a good set of hair on him. So, uh, yeah, you know, nice golfer, attractive dude, looking sharp. <laughs> All right. Elliot knows. He says, Steve Scott, let's bring in the star of our DTL golf brand every single Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern time. He joins the show live right now on a Monday morning. Steve Scott, you were on the call yesterday on PGA Tour Live ESPN Plus, and you, you are part of this story. But for a sophomore at Alabama to win an event like that with all of the big boys there, Scheffler, Xander, he played with JT and Sam Burns. How impressed and how shocked, I guess, were you that Nick Dunlap got it done? And good morning. Yeah, good morning. And, uh, you know, I'm I'm totally on the run today, so sorry you can't see my head of lettuce live there, uh, A.B. But, uh, <laughs> but, yeah, Nick Dunlap, you know, I really wasn't surprised. Uh, back in September, I spent uh, about a week over in Scotland, and during that trip, I watched the Walker Cup. At the home of golf there at St. Andrews, I saw Nick Dunlap make an amazing comeback just to have his match. Uh, on the He made an eight-footer right in front of the RNA clubhouse there on the 18th hole where all the legends of the game have done a greatness. Uh, and, and, and he showed me something there where I knew he was going to hold that putt on the last hole. And, uh, you know, he got a little bit of luck from Sam Burns. Uh, they were tied going into that 17th hole, but... Uh, it was no, there was no uh, let up in Nick Dunlap at all, even through adversity on the front nine. Yes, it's, it's kind of ironic how all the storylines kind of play together. Nick Dunlap is at Alabama, at least as of yesterday. I think he's going to be turning pro as early as today if he hasn't already announced it. But he plays at Alabama. He played with Justin Thomas yesterday. He played with Sam Burns, who went to LSU. Sam Burns doubled 17, went into the water. Doubled 18, went into the water. Cost himself probably three or four hundred thousand dollars. I haven't even looked at, at all the payouts yet. But normally you would think it's the amateur. And by the way, the only amateur in the field, 155 pros. Nick Dunlap, the only guy 
that didn't get a paycheck. So sports books were loving the result yesterday because they didn't have to pay out anything when it comes to winning. Christian B pockets <laughs> $1.6 million. But the fact that he didn't melt down tells me that he should turn pro today because why do you go to college, Steve Scott? You go to college to get ready for the pros. He's clearly ready for the pros. Do you agree? Oh, 1,000%. If he doesn't turn pro, I mean, he's in the farmer's field this week. Uh, I, I would imagine he would turn pro. He'd be in all in the signature events. We're going to see a lot of Nick Dunlap real soon. But, you know, as far as the betting perspective goes, think about he at the beginning of this week and the first two winners on the PGA Tour this year. Uh, I mean, Nick Dunlap was plus uh, th 35,000 this week. And the first week at the uh, at the century, Chris Kirk was plus 25,000 and end up winning. Grayson Murray was plus 40,000 and end up winning. Here's a here's a little math for you. If you would have put one dollar on Chris Kirk to win and then you rolled that over to the next week to Grayson Murray and then you rolled that over to this week with Nick Dunlap, you would have a cool twenty eight million dollars in your oh. pocket. How about that? Wow. But, but nobody would probably no be crazy that. enough to do that. Maybe maybe a couple of you out there would be a little nutso to do that. But but that's uh, it shows you how tough this sport is to handicap. Uh, luckily, the Farmers Insurance Open this next week, Tory Pines, that we'll be talking tomorrow at 3 o'clock on DTL Golf. Uh, that's going to be a little bit easier, I think, to, to factor in because it's not going to be such a birdie fest. And uh, a lot of ball striking Jesse, so to speak, are going to uh, really rise to the top there. That's exactly right. That, uh, by the way, Torrey Pines is about 60 miles from where I'm sitting right now. I'm going to be calling an APGA event, which is played on the same course uh, next weekend. It's going to be on Golf Channel on Sunday only. So I'm flying to Florida to call an event that is 60 <laughs> miles from my house. Hey, just how it's, it's how TV and, and it works. So last question, Stephen, I'll let you get out of here. Uh, Scott has a question from the chat. He says, what do you think the future will be? Because it's easy to say, oh, he's going to be a major champion. What do you think the immediate future will be and the long-term future will be for Nick Dunlap? I, I think he's ready to handle this moment, unlike maybe some people who would be in this position – I mean, he obviously won the U.S. Amateur. He had a great year last year. But to, to beat all these guys and to go head-to-head -head with both Sam Burns and Justin Thomas on the final day, I mean, that shows a lot of moxie. And, 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 and think about this. I'm going to leave you with this thought. Think about it if you're Sam Burns. At the beginning of the week, if you watch social media, he lost a bet to the Alabama guy, Justin Thomas. He had to, roll, he had to put RTR, roll, tide, roll, and etch it in his hair. All right. And think about it. He was in the final group with two Alabama guys wow. and had another Alabama guy take the title from him. So uh, Sam Burns, is uh, he needs some Kleenex today, I think. I think you're absolutely right. Well, Steve Scott, thank you for the time this morning. Can't wait to chop it up and really get in to the Farmers Insurance 3 p.m. Eastern Tuesday. That's tomorrow uh, right here on our incredible YouTube channel. Steve, have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow. You got it. And that's a great Steve Scott checking in this morning on a Monday. Most of our Mondays will be looking back at things that happened, trying to help you uh, from an educate and entertain standpoint. How about my man, John? My man, John, says this. Where did it go? Where did John go? He says, sorry, I've been busy this a.m. with work. Ugh, what a glorious day it is to get educated and entertained. Let's have a day. If you haven't noticed already, we're about more than just picks. This is going to be a fun, interactive discussion show. So now, up next. <clears throat> This man has been blowing me and A.B. up, and he says, I can do it all. We told you last week that, unfortunately, because we're moving so fast, uh, our man Ben Horner says, just don't have the time yet because everybody still has their day jobs. We get it, and he'll always have a seat here. But that leaves an opening for an NHL capper. And we're going to be trying different guys out throughout the week. You're going to see different faces here on the show. And also, as we get closer to February 1st, we're going to have shoot your shot ready for anybody that's a member of the crew. You can shoot your shot, be on a show with me, and you never know what that can lead to. So I need a couple of NHL picks. Let's bring in our man, Jacob, who's been absolutely on fire this first start of the week. And you're looking all arrogant and cocky this morning. <laughs> you got your hair going. You got the Reebok swag going. Feeling pretty good on this Monday, huh? Well, you told me to step it up, coach. So uh, that's what I had to do, and uh, that's what I'm here for. 
All right. My man is in the chat the entire show. You have any questions on any sport, he can answer them in real time. But I know you have two picks today, kind of a light schedule across all the sports, but you found two on the ice that you really love. Talk to me. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so tonight, the Chicago Blackhawks take on the Vancouver Canucks and Canucks hottest team in hockey. Um, they are 16 and five against the spread at home taking on a Chicago team who is 4-20 and 20 against the spread on the road. But the real story here is Thatcher Demko, 24-9 uh, this year, uh, allowing just 2.47 goals per game. And the Blackhawks only score about two goals per game on the road. Uh, so great goalie, great team against possibly the one of the worst teams in hockey. Um, so for this first play, I'm going to be on the Canucks minus two. Um, and then you want me to keep going? Jacob. This is not your first rodeo. All right, so I'll keep Give going. Me your two picks <laughs> and let's go. All right, so my next play is going to be a two-leg parlay. I'm going to be on the Canucks minus one and the Kings minus one. Uh, it's a little hard to get on the Kings minus one and a half uh, versus the Sharks. Uh, it's a little steep at minus 150. So I decided to parlay these two teams together. This is more a play against the uh, Sharks than on the Kings. Sharks 4-21 and 21 against the spread. Uh, they are 0-6 straight up the last six against the Kings, 2-15 and straight up overall their last 17 games, 1-10 and straight up on the road, uh, and they're averaging just 1.96 goals on the road. So really bad team, quite, quite possibly uh, the two worst teams in hockey are playing tonight. Uh, and Kings at home, I'll take a shot on it, uh, and I'll parlay that with this Vancouver team. So uh, those are going to be my two plays for tonight. Now before people in the chat are watching at home go, oh, a parlay for minus 141. Hockey is just like MMA or soccer. Sometimes the odds get a little bit skewed because of the difference in how good the teams are. But let me ask you this question as we continue to hashtag educate and entertain. If I'm laying a goal by both teams and Vancouver, say, wins by one and the Kings cover that one and win by two, is that a loss? Is that a win? What happens? Uh, it just eliminates one leg of the parlay and, and you'll win one leg, push on the other. So you'll get a little bit of a win and your money back. Uh, but at minus 141, uh, you know, sometimes the juice is worth the squeeze. Why do you keep taking my catchphrases? I am getting <laughs> By the way, Mark says, I love this picks. I'm targeting both games slightly different, but he loves this angle. So Mark likes what you're, he's picking up what you're dropping down. All right. So you're going to have a busy week. We got some soccer coming up late in the week. Yes. Oh, for sure. There's some free plays right now on Twitter. All right. Free plays on Twitter as we support our guys and other people who come on will support what they're trying to do. I've never understood. No, let's put a block there. Let's put a wall there like other people do. No, we want everybody here and to support everybody. Jacob, you're doing a great job. Get back into the chat and we'll see you tomorrow. All right, big boy. All right, coach. All right. It's my man Jacob doing NHL today. He slated it on soccer last week. And let's bring my main man, AB, back into the house. A.B., we got to work with our man, Jacob. Do, do you want me to keep going? Do you want me to keep going? Got to let it fly. Now, I will give him credit on this. Juice is worth the squeeze. He pulled that one out. Solid work. I'm hot. I'm hot. Solid work on that. Yeah, I'm yeah. hot. I'm hot. That's, that's definitely going to be a T-shirt, but he can't take my catchphrases, A.B. That'd be like him giving out the A.B. three with three hockey plays. That's what it would be like. <laughs> Damn it. I All right. Now, we've got some hoops. As A.B. already said, a very light day. Very light day on the hardwood today. But we did find some games that we like. So, A.B., I want to throw this one at you. Because our man, Jared says, coach with the tough love. You're damn right. You're <laughs> damn right. So, Howie sent this in. And I want to get your take on it. Because we haven't had a lot of time for you and I to really dig into college basketball because of all the NFL. But he loves Kansas, the Jayhawks tonight, at home, lane eight and a half over the Cincinnati Bearcats. And he just sent this to me. I'm going to read it word for word. Kansas coming off disappointing loss at West Virginia. Last time they lost on Saturday, deployed them, and they covered, trying again with Bill Self on their case. Historically, KU's all, always been really good in these type of situations. They have a disappointing game on Saturday. They only have one day off. Then they play on Big Monday and come right back. I love this situation for the Kansas Jayhawks. You? I love it, too. And I'll tell you this. Bill Self doesn't mess around. I guarantee he had the red ass ready to go. <laughs> and, yeah, they might have had a quote-unquote off day. No. 
<laughs> no, he was letting him know exactly what time it is on Monday. So I'm with it on this. one. All right. Skunky, by the way, said, I think coach would want the brand to be using his catchphrases. No, meet me at the pay window and we'll discuss. Yes, the universe can use my catchphrases, <laughs> but my own crew cannot use my catchphrases. Who are we talking about? Skunky on it, though, boy. I like it. He really is. It's really weird. It, it, it's funny because when you come up with all great ideas like me and you always do, and then other people take them or they use them as their own, it, it just, you know, I, I kind of got tired of that. Did you? Yeah, just in my life, I'm talking about nothing specific. Nothing specific. <laughs> <laughs> all right, AB, I'm looking at a couple of props from you that uh, tonight, not a big slate in the NBA, but we do have several games. What did you find that you liked? Mondays suck. Let's just put that out there. There's your next T-shirt right there. So every time that I'd go into the office, all right, on Mondays, kind of be dragging ass, all right? Long Sunday, watch a lot of football. And what that means is around lunchtime after that, might be a little behind. So I'd start firing threes, all right? That's what the NBA is going to be tonight. So we have two plays. First one, my man, Triple J, Jaron Jackson Jr. of the Memphis Grizzlies. Shout out. City of Memphis, Whitehaven. That's where my family comes from. There we go. Look, Jared Jackson, over two and a half threes. My man has been shoot In his last three games alone, he shot 27 threes, all right? The Grizzlies obviously dealing with the season-ending injury to our man there. Uh, I just forgot his name. How, John Morant. Why? Well, how can I forget John Morant's name? That's so all right. Now they, they you find him yourself, too. Yeah, right. Now you find yourself looking for, all right, who is going to take advantage of the missing role? The good thing is that the Grizzlies, when Moran has been suspended, really didn't take too many steps back. They looked different. Mm -hmm. However, they still won games. Now, our man, Jared Jackson, the block Panther, all right? He can not only play defense, but our man can shoot, too. So we're going to take him over two and a half threes, plus 135. And then De'Aaron Fox, the Kings, over two and a half threes as well, minus 120. I don't even have to say anything else. De'Aaron Fox is coming out firing. That's how this man gets down, especially when they're looking to steal a win. So take these two over two and a half threes. Guess who's very happy with you right now, AB? Who? Big Cheesy. What do you say? Big Cheesy oh, says, yeah. I love this pick, AB. Light the beam tonight, baby. Yeah. Oh. There we go. Sack town, stand up. <laughs> <laughs> Chad says something is ringing in the distance. The closing bell is on the way. For those of you brand I'm new to driving friends. the line, Chad runs the chat. Big Cheesy runs the chat. You guys, the universe, run the chat. All right, AB, I like where your head is at when it comes to De'Aaron Fox, but I want to go back to my first play first because a lot of people, I believe, are sleeping on the Cleveland Cavaliers, and they're going on the road tonight to O-Town, one of my favorite places, O-Town. Remember that group O-Town, A.B.? Very oh. much so. Oh, yep. man. They were like that group. They they won that, that TV show. They had like one hit, and now they're touring with a bunch of other 2000s. I can, and I can go ahead and answer the question. People, at, people ask all the time, who's the greatest, you know, boy band ever? All right? They always go Backstreet Boys in sync. All right? Two answers. Number one, it's Boys to Men. That was the greatest boy band of all time. But number two, Backstreet Boys were better. Insync just had Michael Jordan, all right, and Justin Timberlake. That's true. Coach, all right, back to you. No, no, that's all right. That's 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 why we're here to be able to talk about stuff like that. Now, by the way, Justin Timberlake had a concert in Memphis on Saturday to talk about his basically ninety minutes. He's releasing a sixth studio album. Did you know that? Sixth I did not. studio album. Yeah, and they've been teasing an Insync reunion, and just like with my man Darius Rucker when he got back with Hootie and the Blowfish. If you're in sync and you haven't had that big paycheck in like 20 years, can you imagine an in sync tour? How much money the whole group would make if Timberlake's with them? Stop it. Just stop. Oh. It. Just like the money they're going to make, AB, tonight, if you take the Cavs minus one and a half. That's a professional <laughs> segue right there. That is a professional segue right there. So the Cavs, I'm going to read their last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven scores. 116.95. These are all wins by the Cavs. 116.95. 135.95 over the Bucks. 109.91 Bulls. 111.102 Nets. Spurs, they just win by two. But then the Wizards, they win by 24 and 29. Translation, the Cavs are on fire. Sure, there's some bad teams here, 
but the Bucks are pretty good. And when you start rolling and you're scoring north of 110 every single game, I'll take my chances tonight in O-Town. Now, <clears throat> because I was going to use this, that's why I was so hot at Jacob, the Celtics money line minus 155. Normally, A.B., we would not give out a minus 155. But the juice sometimes is worth the squeeze. Jacob, see how you do that? Now, why are we giving out minus 155? Well, because they're playing in Dallas. The Mavericks can be dangerous. They're not always dangerous, but they can be dangerous. So I want to take the three and a half points off and just say they're going to win the game. They're coming off a road win in Houston, and they're also ticked off because they laid an egg at home against Denver the game previous to that, their first home loss of the entire season. So they want to get back to get their mojo going, I think, tonight in Dallas. It's a great atmosphere. It's a great arena. When you go there in the regular season, teams absolutely love to shoot in this arena. So I'll take the Celtics tonight on the money line, minus 155. Then, my last play. And I'm kind of changing my thought process, A.B., I don't necessarily hate unders anymore. I don't hate parlays anymore. <clears throat> so tonight, Kings on the money line. They're laying eight against the Hawks. Take the points out. Suns on the money line. Minus four and a half over the Bulls. Take the points out. Both teams are at home. The Suns have been absolutely on fire. Kevin Durant is starting to find his groove. And the Kings over the Hawks, that's an easy one. Do you like even money? On these two money line parlays, both games are late too. So if you want to bet on the early games, wait a little bit. You could then bet the late parlay. You like that, AB? I do like it. Look, a lot of times people in parlays, they go for, you know, super high payouts, which, I mean, I get it. That's the point of it. But sometimes you use parlays as a tool, all right, to get yourself better numbers, more likelihoods to hit. And right there at even money, absolutely, man. Because let me say this. There is not a damn thing wrong with coming out and saying, I'm going to double up this money, move on to the next day. That's how you accumulate. And that's how we do it here at DTL. Uh, by the way, um, <clears throat> Matty says he doesn't hate parlays or unders. Who are you? And what have you done? <laughs> <in college? laughs> I was wondering the same thing myself. It's all right. I'm learning. I'm growing. I'm growing as a, an individual, as a leader. You know, because somebody's got a lead, right, A.B.? Nobody yeah. is bigger than the brand, though. We know that. Nobody's bigger than the brand. No, right? nobody. But, nobody. you know, we do like you in that leading spot. And, you know what? A little bit of adapting. A little bit. It's it's needed for personal growth for everybody. And, Coach, let me say this. Yes. All right? And we'll just jump right back into the closing bell. Not to jump your spot, but I wanted to, to say it while you just brought this up. Okay? With the Celtics, your yep. man, Chris Stapps, Porzingis. That is the choice oh. today. They're oh. going. The, the crew has voted. They've made their selection. Pull that screen up for us if we could. Chris Stapps, Porzingis, over 18 and a half points at minus 115 is the crew's play of the day. And guess what? Over his last two games, Chris Stapps has 53 points. Nice call. Okay. Yeah, he's been playing really, really, <clears throat> excuse me, really, really well. Uh, good suggestion as we, again, we're only day eight for the relaunch. We're not start. If anybody says starting over, I'm going to, I'm going to lose my mind. Relaunch, <laughs> rebranding, and it's a much better brand. I'll be honest with you. The look is a phenomenal AB. Well done. But Scott says, can we get some theme music with Cashin with the coach? Do we have any music perhaps that moving forward we can use for the brand, for the shows, things like that? Or do, do we have that? We do. We oh. absolutely do. Yes. Interesting. All right. A couple other things. If you missed it at the top of the show, as we are entering week two, we are still working on a lot of things. As of February 1st, AB, Thursday, February 1st, we're launching two things. Our merch store will be live. And I see Zach in the chat. We are going to go with Zach's idea first. We're going to have a featured merch item Every single week, we'll put it up on the screen. We'll have a QR code for you. All of that. Every week, we'll change it to something new. That will launch on February 1st. Also, if people want to be a member of the crew, it's going to be a very exclusive club. And if you're part of the crew, AB, they're going to get watch parties, like real watch parties, not like what people did last night on that game. That was embarrassing. Like a real watch party where you talk about live betting, you talk about what's going on in the game instead of uh, snacks during the game that was awful uh, but 
Also, the thing I'm most proud of and the thing that I think is going to be huge is shoot your shot. So shoot your shot is going to be what, A.B.? What are aspiring handicappers? Everybody in the chat always says, I can do this. I can sit next to the coach in A.B. Well, guess what? They're going to get their chance, aren't they, A.B.? They absolutely are. And what it is going to be is essentially what we have seen for the last two, three years is that we always say that, the crew is the best in the game, and they are. And now you want to make picks for real? Not only are we going to give you that opportunity, I'm going to produce it for you, all right? <laughs> I'll set you up graphically everything, the same that you have on this show that we do. I will set you up. We will brand you. We will put your name, show, whatever you have, all right? We'll put it out there. So. <laughs> Who's going to host that AB by chance? Are they going to have like some random host that nobody knows about? No, I think that they're going to know this host pretty well. Uh, I'll oh. tell you what, if I were beside you, I would just put a mirror in front of your face <laughs> and I think that that would answer it. Yeah, like that, that's, that's it. All right. It is going to be a show, a real show. It is going to be that said members, member or members of the mm. crew with you, coach. And I'll be on the sticks. I'll get you all set up. Don't worry about any of that. Yeah. You know, understand we're also very real and we're also very honest. Not everybody's built for this. Not everybody's built for this, but you're going to get your shot because in any business, any media show, whatever, sometimes people just need their shot. But then sometimes you realize maybe this isn't for me. So understand just because you get your 15 seconds doesn't mean you're automatically going to graduate to this show. But I promise you this, if we find a diamond in the rough, if we find somebody that we like, most definitely you'll be here at 10 a.m. on a weekday. And who knows? Look what Jacob just wrote in the chat. He says it's been life-changing when these guys do that, just so you know. And, and let me say, not to interrupt you, Coach, but let me say this. It, we'll, we'll speak more on it, you know, when this launches. But I want everybody to understand, like, if this is something that you are interested in and you're thinking right now, like, yeah, I, I, I want to do this. I want to be a part of it. Understand going into it. You just be prepared to come on right that's it we'll take care of a lot of it on the back end we'll set you up nicely we'll make sure that you look good you sound good like don't necessarily concern yourself with all of that mm -hmm. you just bring your energy your style and it doesn't have to mirror me or coach you be you be authentic i'm telling you you just have the you know the 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 want to we will put you in a great spot i promise you that you're damn right. I could name, I'm not going to, but I could name three or four guys right now that I personally found that had no experience in this business at all. And we coached them to the point where they were good enough. It can happen. It can happen. And we're going to give you that shot. Now, also behind, quickly behind, if you're a member of the crew, we're going to have different series, coaching series. We're going to teach you what it's like inside of an NFL locker room and what the coaches think about, which is then help you with your NFL and college football picks. We're going to do golf series as well. Anything you can think of, we want to have crew exclusive so you guys can have that extra content. And we're not just muddling up our YouTube page with all that kind of stuff. So those are just two things, A.B., that we have coming. Now, it's time. We end every single show like this. Time for the closing bell. What do you got? Absolutely. So you take a look at Chris Stapp's Porzingis. That is the choice for the crew today, over 18 and a half points. But the look is going to be not only AFC and NFC championships coming up this weekend, but the Super Bowl as well. And we're going to talk about this for the next three weeks. But what I want you to kind of get in your head now is that both championship games and the Super Bowl they're different, okay? They uh, the, the timing of these games are different. Everything about it. So prepare yourselves accordingly for this weekend. But then the two weeks leading up to the Super Bowl, you're going to have to think completely different in regards to how these games go. And I have tracked every stat over the last five Super Bowls of exactly how to play this game of every single drive. You are going to like it. I assure you that.
Oh, I love the closing bell. That's how we end every single show, every single day. We will be back Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern time to break down everything college hoops and also talk about NFL coaching changes or perhaps hires today as well. Do not forget, Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern time, it's DTL Golf. Me, Steve Scott, and this week, Fast Eddie Fernandez live from Mexico on the show. We're discussing Nick Dunlap and the Farmers Insurance, which this week, is a Wednesday start, a Wednesday start this week. So you want to tune in live. You'll have less than 24 hours to get all of those picks in. But in the meantime, have a great day. Pay it forward. Be kind to one another. Include everybody. And remember this, there's only one thing left to do. And I believe you all know what that is. You've got your marching orders. Let's take all of these tickets straight to the pay window. For my entire group, love more. My man, Jacob. Get your own phrases. Steve Scott calling in from the car, talking golf. My man, A.B., doing this thing big with your boy, the coach. I am simply trying to keep this train on said track. We grind for you so we can win with you. It's truly what we're all about right here at Driving the Line. Good luck.